Oh hey, it's Emily. It is early in the morning because that's kind of the time I found that's best to film recently. I don't know. I haven't even had my coffee yet and I need to get through this pretty quickly before I need to go downstairs and go to work. So we'll see if this can happen. So I'm just going to jump right in. The first thing I read in the month of July is Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. This one follows a woman who is in a coma and she's trying to figure out why she's being visited in the hospital by her sister and her husband. She can hear people and kind of see what's going or not see, but kind of understand what's going on. Um, but she can't let people know that she, like she can't physically let people know that she can kind of hear what's going on. So she's trying to piece together why she's in the hospital, what happened. She thinks her sister or her husband had something to do with it and she's trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so you follow several different timelines. You follow her in the hospital, um, you follow a little bit before that, kind of around the time of the accident, and you follow some diary entries that were written a while ago. And so you kind of go back and forth between. So it's definitely an interesting. I like going kind of back and forth between those different timelines. I thought it was pretty well written. Um, I liked the audiobook. The narrators were, were pretty fun. Overall, entertaining, enjoyable listen. Um, some frustration. Um, in that some of the, there were definitely some interesting twists and turns along the way. Some of the interesting reveals though were things that could have been interesting to kind of figure out how she pieced it together were kind of, sometimes it was a symbol just like, oh, suddenly I remembered this and I was just hoping it would be a little bit more interesting or complex than that because there could have been some interesting, there could have been some interesting stuff done with how she was able to piece things together because it seemed unlikely to me that especially if you sustained a traumatic head injury that you would kind of remember a lot kind of right around the accident that you just like suddenly would be able to remember. I mean sometimes memories can come back but I was just hoping for something other than just like oh suddenly I remembered this and that helped me piece this together. I don't know. Anyway so that was a little frustrating. Um, it's probably not something I'm going to think too much about in the future or reread but it was entertaining. I'm glad I listened to it. Um, trigger warning for sexual assault. Just as a note, there is a there is definitely a scene of like on-page sexual assault, so keep that in mind. Um, yeah. So next book I read was Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, and I loved every second of this. It was precious. It was everything I wanted. I. I oh. It's probably gonna be one of my favorite books of the year. So this follows Morgan Crow, who is a it's a middle grade fantasy. Follows Morgan Crow, who is a cursed child. So she basically gets blamed for everything bad that happens in this town. Like literally, she has to like write apology letters. She needs to like her parents need to like pay out money as compensation for just like the bad things that happen because they get blamed on Morgan. They follow Morgan, and you know she's trying to just live her day-to-day -day life as best she can and it gets around to her to bid day around her 11th birthday and she's not really expecting anything she's actually expecting to die on her 11th birthday because that's when cursed children they're supposed to die at a particular um, time and she's supposed to be dead on her 11th birthday um, and instead there's a bid day that happens and this is where people kind of come bid on children in this community to be able to take them to see like educational facilities and stuff so they're like benefactors that can take them off to different schools and Morgan's of course not expecting to get any bids because why would she get any bids as a cursed child who's about to die and she gets bid on by Jupiter North and he takes her to this magical land called Nevermore and um, she gets to um, take part in trials to see if she can become part of the Wondrous Society and so you follow her going to Nevermore, you follow her staying in this really cool hotel that I could not get enough of. I loved the hotel and she's meeting different contestants and she's trying to figure out why she's special or why she would ever be accepted into the Wondrous Society. So you kind of follow her going through the trials um, to see if she can be accepted into the Wondrous Society. And I, and this was just precious. I loved, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it, I loved every second. Okay, next book I read was The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. This one was fantastic. I also listened, sorry, listened to Nevermore in audio. Great audiobook. I also listened to The Thirteenth Tale on audio and also really enjoyed both narrators. So you follow a couple different things. Um, you follow a woman who is a writer 
she's a biographer and this kind of elusive um, author contacts this biographer and says I want you to write my biography and uh, so you know the biographer is like why would you why do you want me to write your biography and the person that she's going to be writing about is an author who's like a pretty prolific author she has given a lot of interviews but she's never really told the truth in them and she kind of finally wants to tell her true story and I love this. So you follow um, this biographer kind of going to meet this author and kind of starting the interview process and um, you know starting to write her biography and kind of writing her story down. Uh, plus you're also following kind of the author as a child and kind of the story that she's actually telling to this biographer and she grew up you know in this old mansion so there's kind of a cool atmosphere there and you kind of follow her growing up the people in this town and you kind of figure out why she never told her story why she's wanting to tell her story now why she's wanting to tell her story to that particular person and it was great it was wonderful i really enjoyed it um i thought it was just super interesting the writing is gorgeous um there and you know it's definitely a slow story but i really really enjoyed um, you know, the main characters. I enjoyed kind of going back and forth and I just enjoyed the story being told. I don't know, I just, I, I really, really loved this one. So the next book I read was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I have some mixed feelings about this one. So I loved the gothic vibe. So this is um, kind of a gothic story that was written, what, in the 1930s maybe? I need to double check the actual publication date. Um, but it was written a while ago. It's a gothic story that follows an unnamed main character who is going to be, I um, mean, you know, she meets this guy, um, she ends up marrying him, she's going to be his second wife, his first wife, Rebecca, died, um, and, you know, so she moves into this guy's mansion, he's super wealthy, and she's starting to meet kind of the staff that work at this mansion, and, you know, she she kind of finds that the house is kind of not not literally like haunted by Rebecca's ghost but just she's kind of living in Rebecca's shadow even though Rebecca is dead and so she's kind of struggling to kind of find her place in in her own life really um you know with her husband with the the staff that's and his family and with the staff that's in this house and just trying to come to terms with um, the fact that the staff really loved Rebecca and you know basically kind of resent her for taking Rebecca's place and you find out more about Rebecca's death and you know things kind of go from there and <laughs> I okay I'm trying to see how much I can actually say without being spoilery I I loved the gothic vibes that was really great. It was a very, very slow story, very slow build up. Um, but I love the gothic vibes. I love the writing. Um, I don't like the main character. Um, there wasn't much time spent on the actual romance or connection between her and her husband. And so I didn't, and he, the husband kind of treats her terribly. You know, there wasn't really much on page for me to like know why they cared about each other, to kind of really believe that they cared about each other. Like there was nothing there for me uh, to kind of really buy the romance. So there was that element, um, which kind of comes into play later. I'll try to be as unspoilery about this as possible. Kind of comes into play later, where there's a key thing that kind of tests them. And it kind of, instead of her saying, okay, this is messed up, like I need to kind of reevaluate some things, she kind of goes in harder <laughs> into their connection to try and like sticks by him with some things and I was like what are you doing he doesn't even care about you like he literally does not even show you that he cares about you why why are you helping him why are you or like why like why are you sticking with him with certain things and and I I, I don't know then there was one thing in the middle that kind of happened suddenly that kind of changes the course of the book and then the ending resolution to it is just it was to me very unsatisfying it was like that was 
that was it. I, I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to talk about this one without a spoiler review. Maybe I should just film a spoiler review to kind of rant a little bit about the parts that frustrated me. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about it. I like the vibe. I like the gothic vibe of it. I like the writing, but that was just about it. Okay, next I read To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. I love this. I love Becky Chambers. I read her entire Wayfair series, the three that are out so far. There's a fourth one that's gonna be out next year, early next year and I'm pumped. Um, so this is a novella that is unrelated to the three other books that she's written so far and this just follows a crew who is... hold on. Come on. There you go, good boy. Um, so this follows a crew who is going out to four... There's Apollo. <laughs> Hi, baby. So this book follows a, or this novella follows a crew who is out to just find out more information about different worlds. And uh, so they're, you know, they're going to different places. So you get to see some different worlds. Um, I, how much should I say? It's a short novella. Um, and so it's basically kind of the lessons that they learn along the way and the things that they see um, they kind of I really don't want to say much more I don't know if you like Becky Chambers writing I think you're really gonna love this because um, it's her classic character driven sci-fi where you really get to know the crew and you really feel like you're a part of the crew and you really get to see some of the cool things that they see and experience some of the cool things that they experience and they ultimately just kind of need to stick together in order to in order to survive and it's great I loved it I loved every second um, so would recommend um, I, I'm gonna read anything Becky Chambers writes because she's wonderful the next thing I read is um, or that I finished Blackland Captain and this is the second book in the Ketty J series by Chris Wooding. So this is a space pirate series and you do need to read them in order. This is a different, like it's a different main adventure that this kind of ragtag space crew goes on. Um, and so as I said they're space pirates so it picks up after the events of the first one and it is a different main adventure but there are threads that kind of you see from the first like you do need to read the first one and then the second one and then I'm assuming then the third one and I think there are four out so you do need to read them in order uh, but it was just great to be back with this crew it was great um, like I love this crew so much <laughs> so it was great to be back with them it was great to just see what they were up to and see what shenanigans they could get themselves into so in this one they are essentially hunting for a treasure that they think is gonna make them wealthy and then they can kind of live a calmer life and of course that goes wrong um, they're betrayed by people they need to kind of find out who they can trust um, and yeah I think that's that's kind of the main adventure that they're going on but there's conflicts between different groups that still that are still kind of tied from the first one and so some of those come to a head in this one as well. It was fun! If you want something that's like Firefly, I would recommend this series. So the next thing I read is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This one was so much fun. This follows a woman who when she was a young kid, like five years old, her family moved into this mansion this mansion and after what three weeks they kind of escape in the middle of the night terrified for their lives her father writes a book about the experience and so she her the main character is Maggie she has kind of been followed by this book or kind of in this book's shadow her entire life and she doesn't even really remember the events of what her father was talking about or kind of escaping from this mansion she doesn't really remember it um, so you know you also follow her as an adult and so you kind of follow her, her father has died and he's kind of left Bainberry Hall to her as part of her inheritance. So she wants to go back to kind of renovate it, sell it, um, but then it kind of becomes an adventure or an exploration of kind of just her trying to find out the truth about what happened to her when she was a kid in this house. And so you follow both her as an adult trying to discover the truth of what happened and chapters from the book that her father wrote kind of back and forth. And I really liked that going back and forth. Um, I thought it was super interesting and it was really cool to see both of the, the events both in 
the book and kind of the events that happened when she was a kid and the events that are happening to her now because like weird things start happening when she's back to renovate and um, you know kind of what happened when she was a kid and what's happening now kind of mirror each other and kind of ramp up at the same rate so I just thought the pacing was really good in this one and it was just super fun to kind of see both things um, keep keep ramping up slowly but surely um, so I thought it was super interesting I thought the ending was really interesting um, I enjoyed it. I think I'm actually going to reread this one, and I don't say that about too many thrillers. Um, but the, yeah, this is just kind of a fun, haunted mansion kind of story. Would recommend. Um, so the last thing I read in the month of July is Red Shirts by John Scalzi. If you are a Star Trek fan, would highly recommend. So this is basically a spoof of Star Trek, and but it's like clearly done out of love. <laughs> and this one follows um, an ensign who is now kind of on the, the flagship um, of the equivalent of Starfleet and he's you know he's a scientist he's kind of in the the lab basically and he starts to notice that a lot of people in this crew kind of go on a lot of away missions that's part of what's expected of them and he kind of realizes that although the the high up officers sometimes get injured or even severely like none of them ever die but the lower level ensigns die all the time and so you know he has to he's been told or warned be very careful about going on away missions like you're gonna die <laughs> and he's trying to figure out what's going on there are just like some weird things about this ship that he's trying to figure out what the heck's going on <laughs> and so it just follows it follows him and him trying to figure out what's going on realizing some things about what's going on and trying to trying to fix it and it was just fun. I thought it was a really funny story. The audiobook, I listened to this one on audio, and it is narrated by Will Wheaton, <laughs> which is delightful. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It was just a fun, funny time. It was a very lighthearted book. It's not something to be taken too seriously or thought about too seriously, because um, it is like it is a Star Trek episode spoof, and it was just a delight from start to finish. Um, so I had, a, I had a really fun time listening to this one. And that is everything I read in the month of July. Overall, pretty good reading month. I started doing reading vlogs. So if there are if there's a reading vlog that talks about the things that I talk about in this wrap up, I will also link those below in case you want to kind of get my as I'm reading the, these books thoughts instead of getting them, you know, a month later <laughs> or a month and a half later. <laughs> and so I'll be sure to link those below. And thank you so much for watching. See if I can get Apollo to say bye. Apollo! No, he was, he's having none of this. You say bye? It's like, yeah, have a good one, everyone. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, as I said, I'll be sure to link all that below. I'll also be sure to link my Twitter and Instagram. That's where I like to hang out. And I'll also be sure to link more information about how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>